The man was happy. He went to the temple. I think he, he wanted to offer his thanksgiving. He didn't have a lamp to offer. He did not have a, a, a cow to offer. He did not have a dove, a turtle dove to offer. He had nothing to offer, not even a wheat offering. But he had a heart that says to God, thank you for remember me even after 38 years. And lo and behold, Jesus came back to the temple. Now Jesus walks up to the man and he says, Sin no more, or worse things will befall. Wow. Sin no more. The last sin that you committed stayed with you for 38 years. And all of us, in our own peculiar definition, would know and would say, 38 years is a long time. And Jesus said, you think 38 years is long? The next time you persist in your sinful life, worse things will happen to you. Wow. If that one doesn't scare you and scare you into living good life and, and holy and precious life before God, I don't think any el anything else would do it. And uh, <clears throat> Jesus, and then he proclaimed Jesus and couldn't even stop telling others that it was Jesus who healed him. And the scripture says, in chapter 16, which was not read to you this morning, it says, For this reason the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. Brothers and sisters, the Jews became so idolatrous that they had made the Sabbath idolatry. Because, as always our Lord said, the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Jesus had a completely different understanding when he gave the law. It was not meant to be that way. They should have understood it differently. Now, in, the, in chapter, in, in verse 17, he says, But Jesus answered them, My Father has been working until now, and I have been working also. You know what does that mean? My, my Father has been working all the time until now. It means he has not missed a day, not even Sabbath. And I am working every day, like my father. And you should be working every day, like our Lord and our God, in doing good things and righteous things on the Sabbath. I think now, unfortunately, we live in a world that I don't think we honor the Sabbath that we, the way we should honor the Sabbath. I think our Lord, when our Lord is here with us, He would say, the way you're going about the Sabbath is the wrong way. Because you do your laundry on the Sabbath. You do chores on the Sabbath. You, you have not set the Sabbath for God's glory. You may show up to church on the Sabbath and spend a couple hours at most for those that show up early 
And for those that show up late, then I'll just complain about how long is the service. And for those that do that one and they, they pretend to be Christian for two, three hours on Sunday, and they feel good about themselves, they speak well, they don't curse, obviously have no opportunity to curse in church. I hope none of us do. We, we maintain decency when we're here. We think about God, we feel about God, we worship God, we, we, we have God in our life, we see Him in us and around us and in the, on God's altar. God is vis visible to us everywhere we look and every, every time we raise our heads up and our eyes up, we see the presence of God in His beautiful images that we have that has adorned us, God, this house of God. And then we leave after we enjoy a nice meal provided by one of our wonderful parishioners. They work so hard uh, to prepare a decent offering to God and to you. And uh, you enjoy the food, you enjoy the fellowship. Some only shall walk to church just to eat, like when we have memorial service. I can't believe the, 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 the odyssey that people has when they walk in after the service is done and straight, and find, straight into the narthex, into the fellowship hall, and find a place to sit and just eat. Who are you kidding? Are you, are you telling the people that, that, that they're offering the memorial for their loved ones that you're here with them to pray with them? And this is what we're supposed to be doing. This is what we're supposed to be doing, to share in the grief and in the prayer of our brother and sister and in their memory and in commemorating them and praying to God that God will overlook their sins and may God may bless them and, and keep them and give them repose and rest in paradise with the righteous and the just who are praying for them. And then when we, when we come pretend, pretending that we're doing that, when do we do that? Right at the end. Brothers and sisters, if any of us ever in this situation, please don't come here. Don't. It's a mockery of God and your friends. You're mocking God when you do that. If you have friends that do that to you, they mock you. They don't respect you. They don't respect our church. They don't respect our God. And if you don't respect our God and our tradition, you're not welcome here. We don't want you, neither does God want you. If no priest ever said it to you, shame on them. If no priest ever teach you that, shame on them. We either have to be the church and God's people or not. God will never bless us unless we, we truly seek God's mercy and God's grace. Don't invite people that don't respect us. Don't respect our deceased one don't come to really truly grief with us I'd rather have 10 people in church that truly love God and worship God than 5,000 people that despise God
You don't build churches with those that don't love God. You build churches with those that love God. Please, brothers and sisters, don't compromise and don't let someone else compromise your faith and your integrity. When you invite people to come to, to participate in your grief and offer prayers with you, tell them the time where you would like them to come to church. Tell them the time when you like them to be in church and what is the right time and the right place. If you only want my food and you're hungry, come and tell me and I'll give you money. Go somewhere else and buy food. Go somewhere else and buy your own food. I can't have fellowship with someone that despises my faith and despises my, my, my grief and my pain and my suffering. Honor God. Give Him the self. Don't do laundry on yourself. Right. You may like your garden. Don't do garden chores. Don't plant seeds. Don't plant trees. We did. We showed up yesterday and we planted trees. And God's house is being glorified and we're creating beauty. Beauty with those that love to make God's place beautiful. You can share in that. And blessed are those who come out and serve and offer the service and the love. You can tell me how much you love God all you want, but bottom line, where are you when you are most needed? I don't have a lot of time. Yeah, I, I understand. You may have half an hour, an hour. Show up and put your half hour. The people that do that, they don't need an invitation. They just come out and do things. They know what's needed. We got done. We got done. Look, now we have our speakers, good sound system. And it came out of the generosity of people that believed in it. And they, they saw the need and they, they helped. Now you can hear me speak. You can hear me holler more. And Joe, Joe, uh, uh, Jacob would never say uh, he can't hear me. Right, Jacob? Unless he's asleep. But when he's with me, he's with me. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for remembering and seeing how we've been vandalized and you came through. We're still not there yet. But if you haven't done it, please remember to do that. And for those that did it, thank you very much. And God's house is being taken care of and you're caring for it. And thank you for that. Thank you for loving God and serving Him. But I think we need to be really a little bit more serious about our relationship with Him and what kind of influence, influence we have with those around us. Don't be bashful, don't be afraid to teach your friends who we are. When you do that, we impact our world. When you do that, we impact our friends. When you do that, we bless them and we lead them into the kingdom of God. But if we're afraid to tell them when they're doing the wrong things, that they're doing the wrong things, they will keep doing the wrong things. I pray that God will guide us and lead us to always be busy as our Father in heaven and the Son always said, I have that busy, been busy from working from the beginning of time and I am still busy. Be busy in doing the, king, the work of the kingdom of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen.